Yes, I'm joined here on the backside by Louisville native and Kentucky Derby winning trainer Brad Cox. Brad, you got a lot of talented three-year-olds in your barn. Not only these horses here, but have some of these horses surprised you turning out to be Derby contenders coming into this race? Well, no, I think they're they've all they're all talented horses that you know kind of some of them took a while to get going. Angel Vampire, we obviously knew uh, he's a two-turn horse. He's developed the the. the the more he's done, the better he's gotten. Uh, longer the distance, the better he's gotten. So uh, he, he was really no surprise that he would like a mile and an eighth or hopefully a mile and a quarter um, hit show. We liked him from the start. He was a horse that we run, uh, I think, seven eighths first time out at Keeneland. He was able to get the job done. Thought he had stretched as well based off pedigree and physical. And uh, uh, Jace's road, he was able, had enough speed to win going early on at Ellis. Um, showed a lot in his debut. And, uh, you know, he's got the pedigree to stretch. He's stake winner going long. And obviously, um, um, verifying uh, another one that, uh, with enough speed when, when going short, Sarah Togo on Travers Day. And then, you know, as, as the distance has got longer, he's responded and he's able to, you know, stretch out around two turns. All right, let's talk about his show and verifying first. They worked in company the other day. Can you kind of take me through that work and some of the expectations coming in with it? They broke off at the four and a half. I had them, I had them a minute and three from the four and a half back around to the 15, 16th pole. Um, Good move. Uh, hit show was just maybe a touch aggressive early. I'll probably put him on the outside uh, this coming week. But uh, overall, I thought it was a good move for both. I thought verifying was kind of cruising along just a touch easier. Um, kind of showed that in the gallop out, but I think that had to do a little bit with hit show just being a, a touch rank down inside, starting off the work. Yeah, he was kind of getting a little bit amped up, but that kind of seems like it's just him a little bit. Yeah, and I think when they're going a little bit faster pace, we didn't want these two to break off. They just run two weeks ago prior to this work. Um, so we, we weren't looking to do a whole, whole lot with these. I mean, these are good horses. They're going to, you know, they're going to still cruise around there in a minute and change 101. It, so, um, you know, I thought it was a, just a maintenance work and happy with they, oh, really happy with the way they both came out of it, the most important thing. Then I want to ask you about Angel of Empire. He was a little bit closer up last time. Is he kind of a little bit more tactical and maybe a little bit more versatile than some people kind of originally know? I think so. I think, uh, you know, in the Derby, I mean, I think you got to, with all of them, you got to break and go forward. You got to hope, hope uh, you know, you, you get out of the gate and you're not smashed in behind horses or you get squeezed or anything like that. But overall, I think he is a horse that can be somewhat tactical. Um, there was enough pace for him there in the Arkansas Derby. He found a nice little spot up the backside where he wasn't really surrounded by horses and kind of was racing in the clear, but there was enough pace. And obviously at the 3-8s pole, he, he kicked on. And, and look, honestly, I thought he looked like a winner at the 3-8s pole that day, and he stayed on really well. And, you know, he won going on away. He's won, you know, very well. Both runs going a mile and a so I think the mile and a quarter is definitely something he'll be able to handle. And you kind of spoke to it a little bit earlier. Jace's road does have that early speed to develop pretty early, and he is the horse that does kind of have more of the speed than some of the other ones. Can we expect him to be forwardly placed again in the Derby? Um, just break and go forward, yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, I think, you know, that'll be up to Florent, but I think he'll be one that's somewhat close, uh, verifying uh, likewise. I think, you know, he'll break and be close. And, you know, as I, you know, just kind of think about it, how it could unfold, it'd be those two somewhat close, then Angel of Empire and somewhere, you know, not far behind maybe those or right with Angel of Empire would be hit show. But, you know, we'll see. Post position is going to have a lot to do with where they're placed as well. And then just quickly getting back to the Oaks, got three contenders in there, but want to ask you about Wet Paint and Botanical. Both them, Botanical stayed at Turfway. Wet Paint kind of was down there a little bit too in the winter. She had a race there. Were you kind of hiding them there a little bit? I know you keep <laughs> some of your horses uh, down south. So what was what was the purpose of keeping them there in Florence? Uh, that You know, look, that's where end of November, 1st of December, that's where we thought they belong. Obviously, both Phillies had, you know, Botanical had a, Outstanding winner there. Uh, I guess the question mark with her is if she likes the dirt. I saw enough from her this past weekend to think that she will handle the dirt. I loved her move um, outside of Flashy Gym. Um, and then Wet Paint, listen, it, we called an audible uh, to, to run in the uh, Martha Washington, um, and it led to three sh sh straight stake victories for her. So it was a great move. It was a last minute decision to enter her there. Um, if it didn't do that, I don't know. <laughs> she, she, I don't know where she'd be right now. But you know, she obviously handled the fast dirt last time, which was a little bit of a question. But the way she won, um, going away fast dirt, um, I think she, you know she should have loved this mile and an eighth here at Churchill. So both pleasant surprises then. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So we'll see how it goes. All right, Brad. Well, thank you, and as always, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Caitlin. Appreciate right. it.
Thank you. Brad Cox coming in with a strong hand in both the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Oaks. There hasn't been an Oaks and Derby double won by a trainer since 1952, but got a pretty good shot here. Well, thanks, Caitlin. Great.